Here's MTI Instruments Director of Business Development, Donald Welsh. Don? Thank you, Rich. I'm Don Welch, Director of Business Development for MTI Instruments, and today we're going to talk about capacitance displacement measurements. What is a capacitance displacement measurement? Well, essentially we set up a field between two plates. One plate is the face of the probe, the center element, and the other one is a grounded target. If we look at the electric field lines there, we can see that the center lines are very straight, going um, perpendicular into the target. And then we also see fringing fields that uh, are off to the sides, and also one generated by the guard, which we'll talk about in a little bit. What's important about contact, non-contact capacitive displacement measurements is that there's no physical contact between the sensor and the target. So there's no wear, there's no loading, and you also don't have any distortion of the target, whereas contact probes would uh, push on a target and could actually bend it a little bit. The other interesting thing about capacitive displacements is the very high resolution and accuracy we get. It's very similar to laser interferometer, but at a much lower cost. And it can actually have higher stability than some lasers out there. And the resolution is about as good as a laser interferometer, in some cases higher. What are some of the unique advantages of capacitance displacement measurements? Well, it's got very high resolution. The sensors are passive, they're made out of stainless steel, and we also have precision capacitance amplifier designs. The linearity that we can get and the accuracy are down in the range of 0.01% at speeds of up to 5 kilohertz. The resolution is sensor dependent, so the smaller your sensor, the higher the resolution. We can get down to less than 2.5 nanometers for a 25 micron range sensor. As a sensor gets larger, say example 1,000 microns, then our resolution will be about 100 nanometers. And it is possible to actually get down to less than one nanometer with bandwidth limiting and sensor design. One of the biggest accuracy issues related to capacitive displacement measurement is linearity. And if we look at the chart here, we can see a straight line, the black line, I'm sorry, the blue line, that is very straight and that's been curve fitted to the black line which is the actual sensor response and there's deviation about that blue line and it's banded by the upper and lower red dotted lines which would be would correspond to the linearity that we would see so the absolute accuracy depends on the linearity and the resolution of the probe and also the extra errors contributed by the amplifier we also have very low temperature and time time drift electronics and we can achieve 0.02% linearity or better. A little of the science behind the capacitance measuring principle. Capacitance is equal to the area of the probe times the ratio of the dielectric constant of the medium, which is typically air, to vacuum. In vacuum, it's, it would be 20, I'm sorry, 8.8854 picofarads per meter. And typically, the difference between air and vacuum is, is one to one for all practical purposes. We also have the um, distance, okay, the gap from the face of the probe. And as that gap increases, then the capacitance is obviously going to get smaller. If we increase the area of the probe, you can see that the capacitance is going to go up. So it's a trade off between the gap you want to measure and the size of the probe. The other thing we have to deal with is the a guard ring on the capacitance probe. A capacitance probe without a guard ring has field distortion. If we look at the probe in the image here, we can see the center electric field is fairly straight, but as you get to the edges of the plate, we have what's called fringing, and the field starts to distort. Well, that contributes to linearity error, and that's bad. So what we want to do is get rid of that fringing effect on the center plate to the target. The way we do that is by adding a guard ring. The guard ring is run at the same potential as the center electrode, and it linearizes the field. If we look at the image here, we can see the measuring field from the center capacitance element is very straight and very linear, and that's what gives us our good linearity down around the range of 0.01%. If we take the guard ring away, it's going to be horrible, probably worse than 10%. The fringe guard also helps extend the field in a straight line so we can sense targets further away. 